Hi everybody, welcome to Saturday Live at the Backyard Bird Center. Today we're talking about one of the coolest birds I know of, the cedar waxwing. What a stunning photo Mary took here. Um, they, we get a lot of questions about this bird. Uh, they they kind of surprise people a lot at their coloration, their their habits, their you know nomadic nature. A lot of things about this bird uh, spark curiosity and per and people, and we get lots of questions about them. The fall is the time that we see them most often because they are absolutely gluttonous berry eaters, fruit eaters. And with the, the bountiful supply of, of fruit that we have this year because of the wet summer, we're seeing large flocks of cedar wax wings in the area. And this is a, a type of winter in which we could see these large flocks uh, all the way through the winter because there are there's a lot of natural fruit out there for them to, to take advantage of. So not only are we seeing them now, uh, like we usually do, but we also will see them uh, quite a, a long way into winter, I predict, this year. So what are cedar waxlings? Well, they're a really unique bird. Um, they are incredibly unique in that they, they are the ultimate seed dispersal systems for uh, fruit-bearing uh, trees and shrubs. They have a very uh, inefficient digestive tract. And so they, they gorge themselves on large amounts of these berries, uh, and then they pass through their system so quickly that they, uh, they, and they, and they have to poop them out, or sometimes they're known to eat so many at one time that they can't even fly. They'll actually get, they're so heavy that they can't even take off and fly, so they have to sit there and wait and, and digest them, but their digestive tract's so inefficient that they pass through them pretty quickly and of course they disperse the seed and the rest of the the berry out uh, wherever they're sitting and that of course the tree helps to tr spread the trees and the shrubs around and so they're kind of the Johnny Apple seeds if you will of a lot of the berry producing uh, shrubs of, and, and trees of our area so it's a really cool cool bird they are unique in that they're in their only the only member of that family that we have now um, in the whole eastern United States now um, the Bohemian waxwing, which is a larger waxwing, they have mainly in the Pacific Northwest and up in Canada. Uh, they do uh, move out in, uh, in the winter, uh, a little further east than that. I've seen them in Minnesota before, um, some of the plain states, but uh, they're extremely rare in uh, the Kansas City area. I don't know, maybe one or two sightings ever. So um, if you see the, these birds, you're, you're probably going to be a cedar waxwing. And how we normally see them, I guess, so first off, this fantastic picture, very descriptive of that chartreuse yellow, yellow belly. Um, where they get their name, wax wings from, are these little waxy tips that here uh, on the wings. And that's where that comes from. Um, this beautiful black mask. I remember years ago that we had one that we had mounted for the Nature Center in, in, in Liberty, uh, Martha Lafitte, because it had flown into a window and hit, and we had it mounted. And Melanie, uh, it, whenever we got it back from the taxidermist and we got it out, she said, wow, that guy did a really good job with that black paint. I was like, what, what? And we was talking about the black around the eyes and everything. So that's Mother Nature's paint there. That is uh, the true stunning uh, uh, the beauty of that bird. So, um, but what I wanted to, wanted to show you how, you know, in, in nature, a lot of times how we see them are like this. Uh, these are large flocks of them. You see, I don't know if you can see all the individuals that, with the leaves still on the tree, but there were, I don't know, we counted 50 or so in this flock up at Amity uh, a couple weeks ago, well, now three or four weeks ago now. And uh, But a lot of young birds in there, they're not as colorful as the adult birds are, but that's how we see them. We see them moving and flying around um, this time of year. And a lot of these flocks, some of these flocks will end as far south as Guatemala and and, and uh, Central America uh, and, and for the winter and of course some of them will only go as far south as here so uh, a, a wide ranging in um, uh, populations here and I understand from Mark Robbins who's a curator of birds over at the KU Museum of Natural History that from tissue samples from birds that they have died and things they, they find here that they can actually tell where these birds winter from tissue samples 
by you know what, what's in their muscle tissue and their fat tissue uh, from the nu nutrients that they've gotten from certain plants and the and the rainforest versus here, so they know which birds when they, they're passing through if they've collected it uh, where they came, spent the winter. So that's pretty cool information. Um, the uh, the way that we normally see them at, at your bird feeders is at a heated bird bath. This is uh, a, a, a good example. They don't eat uh, bird seed. Now, every once in a while, somebody will get lucky and have them find the fruit, like the raisins or and nut and berry and things like that. Occasionally, they'll, they'll, they'll be lucky enough to have them. That's really uncommon. More, more common to see them at your bird feeders is at a heated bird bath, which is time to get them out right now. Boy, the water was frozen uh, yesterday morning whenever I got up. I know that. So um, uh, this is a great way to see them, a good flock of them here at the bird bath. And then... One thing you can try, although I've, never, I've only known a couple people to have success with this, and this is uh, a, a, a customer had taken a bowl of uh, just the old fruit from her refrigerator that was going bad, and she stuck it in a um, the mixed berries, and she stuck it in a dish, and she's out on the out on the deck, and sure enough, a group of waxwings found this. It's it's pretty incredible. That that doesn't happen very often, but um, again, the best way typically is the heated bird bath. But they're beautiful birds. They are are, um, are known for their gluttony. Uh, the nickname for them in the South is called, they call them Yankee Robins, uh, where they come in and, and because they come in and steal all the berries from your from your trees. So uh, that's a, a Southern thing, I imagine. So uh, one of the nicknames. So um, they are known. One of the, a friend of mine's professor in college said that he would love to be a cedar waxwings because they overeat. And they can actually get intoxicated from the fermented berries on a bush. So they uh, they have a, quite a lifestyle. They eat till they can't fly, and and they sit there and sway on the branches from enjoying the uh, the, the fermented berries. So pretty cool birds, cedar waxwings. Great idea for a program. Thank you for that. It, uh, send in more ideas for programs. It really helps us out. Give us a like and especially share these videos if you will. That really helps us out. Spreads the word out. Two, one. Would you like to learn more about wild birds? You might want to hit that subscribe button.